Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting lesson. Today we're going to start out with an 18 by 24 inch canvas. There is a layer of white gesso already on the canvas. I covered up an older painting that didn't turn out as well. And we're going to start again today and create something even better, I hope. I'm starting out here with an old paintbrush handle, and I'm dipping it into some liquid white. This is liquid white is the same stuff that you see Bob Ross using when he does oil paints. It's a great medium for thinning the paint, allowing blending to be easier. It also lightens things up as we go along. And since we're going to be using a lot of white in this painting, using liquid medium to kind of thin it out and help it to brush on easier is a good thing. Now that I have the liquid white distributed how I want, we're going to go right into the raw sienna and mix that with some of the titanium white. Today I am working in oil paint. I don't often do this because of the smell. It is quite strong and I just prefer the acrylic because it dries faster and I don't have to wait so long if I want to do layered techniques. Often I will work in wet on wet like I'm doing here, have some liquid white on the canvas and then work wet paint into that. It's a great technique to use and it works very well. When I took painting classes in college, we often did oil paintings this way. I just like the acrylic because it is so much faster, it dries quicker, it's cleaner. Don't get quite so much paint on your hands, etc. But today, I know that these oil paintings are often popular. I thought it would be fun to break out the old oil paint. We're going to mix together here some raw sienna, the lemon yellow, the titanium white, and a touch of the permanent red. I say a touch of the red, but we're actually going to keep adding it in until it's pretty red, brownish red color. This is going to be the bottom most layer, and then it will also be on the left hand panel. You can see I have some lines already drawn in, and those are with pencil marks, loose sketching of where I want the dark colors to be. A little more of the sienna there, a little more red, mixing that together. Really want a nice kind of oxide red color for this piece. The inspiration of this piece actually came from a very large commission that I did recently, a large abstract painting. It actually was three by five feet, three feet by five feet, one of my largest paintings yet for a wonderful family that I know. They needed a nice large piece for their living room and I was delighted that they asked me to paint them one and commissioned me to do so. If you'd like to get a commission of your own and get an original painting painted by me for you, just contact me. You can leave a comment below, let me know, and I can get in contact with you. You also can message me on Facebook at my Impulsive Artistry Facebook page, and that's a great way for you to get in contact with me to commission a painting. Okay, here's some titanium white, two inch brush. I'm gonna blend that down. It's a very large brush, it's actually it's a new brush. I bought it with some Christmas money that I got from some friends and family. Blending that in here. And you can see that the sienna there just adds a touch of warmth. And the liquid white also helps the whole thing to blend so smoothly. And we're going to do nice big vertical strokes here. And if some of the brushwork shows through, that's perfectly fine. We're just trying to blend this smoothly as possible. Painting abstracts are just so much fun. This one is a very geometrical design with the squares and the lines. Sometimes it's fun to be a little more sporadic and have different color splotches and blotches. Nice to just vary the colors that you're using and try different things. Much more subdued piece than I normally go for. Like I said, the colors are inspired by this larger 3x5 painting that I did. If you'd like to see that painting, by the way, you can head over to my Facebook page or head over to my Instagram. I'll have links to both in the description below and you can check that painting out. I believe it's called uh, Translation, same as this painting. This is Translation 2, the painting I'm creating now for you. Just kind of recreating, inspired by the last piece.
That painting, the big one, took so long that I decided not to film it. I knew it was going to be about 10, 12 hours, and that's a lot of editing to cut it down. So I thought instead I would just do a smaller version, and you can kind of get the idea of what I did on a larger scale. Okay, here is some of the red and sienna mixture, and I'm blending that into the liquid white already on the canvas and some titanium white that I have on my brush. The white just calms everything down and makes it all more subdued. I'm just following those guidelines. Took a ruler, made sure those lines were pretty straight. It doesn't need to be perfect by any means. It's probably not going to be, even if I'm very careful, but we want it to be as straight as we can get it. Lovely color. The most simple version of this painting is just to paint and smooth out these panels. We're going to add a darker... We're going to add some darker blue and umber on those spaces that I'm leaving blank right now, where I have those stripes marked out with a pencil. And then you could be finished, and that would be all you have to do. I went back through and played with some texture, added some knife work, and just played with it a little bit, adjusted a few things. However, if you want something very basic and very simple, and it looks fabulous as a piece of decor in your house, then just keep it simple like this, blend in these color blocks, add in the blue we're gonna add next, and you can call it done. You can really finish it in 10, 20 minutes and have a wonderful piece of art for your living room or for your kitchen or wherever else you like to put it. Okay, mixing together the Prussian blue, very rich blue, very intense blue, and some raw umber. Now be careful with the blue. I'm going to caution you. It does tend to run, and it will bleed into the white very strongly. As you're applying this, I'm using a good amount of paint, very thick layer. I want the texture of the knife work to show. It is an abstract, so texture is important. And as I'm pushing this paint into the canvas, I am allowing it to cross some of those lines, but I'm trying to follow them for the most part. But do be careful. Don't go putting that blue right into the middle of your white. You'll have a mess on your hands. It will bleed out, so be careful about that. You really try to contain the blue to the stripe we want it, and just be aware of where your hand is. It's so easy to slip of the knife and then it goes splattering across your lovely white. You can scrape it off and put some more liquid white down and maybe add a little oil to your paint so it's thinner. Thinner paint will stick to a thicker paint and probably cover it up. It is possible to do that. It's just kind of a pain to do so. So be careful. That's all I'm saying. Continuing here, fill in this stripe, one vertical stripe, and it's going to meet and form a T intersection with a horizontal stripe, dividing up the different color blocks that we have. If you just fill this in, you're already done. You can finish the painting there. I decided to push it a little more, grab some more of the white, we're going to splatter some white across, we're going to add in some textured, long, curving lines, some horizontal strokes through the blue, and so forth. So you'll see exactly what I mean as we get there. Even so. This painting didn't take that long to create. 20 minutes is pretty fast, I think. Honestly, it helped that I had done the larger painting because I had a much better idea of exactly the effects I was going for and wanted to accomplish. I get the angle right. Here we go. We'll start to put in the blue, following this horizontal line. I 
I love these really calm, subdued colors, very muted colors. It's kind of fun to work on a palette with all these browns and reds. Kind of different for me. I normally go for very bright, bold contrasts. It's just what I gravitate towards. Bright reds, shocking blues and intense greens, bright pops of yellow. That's just what I like, personally. Every once in a while, it's nice to be maybe a little more mature and create a piece that would look wonderful for a piece of decor. Not that you can't have a fantastic, you know, bold, epic, brightly colored painting. You can, and I actually do like hanging really intense colored paintings in my own home. My house, I'm always rotating a gallery of different paintings up in my living room and in my bedroom. And whenever I have company come over, they always get to see the latest and greatest thing that I've created. Taking my time here, just trying to be careful, laid in correctly. Don't need a lot of pressure on that knife. Just gonna fix the bottom edge here with the darker rose color that I have there, of a rusty red. Blend in the sides. Okay. With my two inch flat wash brush, let's just blend this edge. And if a little bit of the blue picks up, that's okay. We just wanna smooth this transition out a little bit. That's better. I'm gonna do the same right here at the top. Again, some of this blue is gonna show up and that just adds a little bit of interest, I think. Got a little high there. We'll just blend it out smoothly, lay it back across. You can see that blue really, really is intense and will start to take over that white very quickly, so be careful. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun. You could stop right there and have a finished painting. It would look fantastic, don't do anything else. If you want to be a little more complicated, Follow me along here. We're gonna create some drippy looking things with the knife using again that dark blue and umber mixture. Tap through, creating some texture in that rose oxide color. Little more of the dark mixture and we're gonna blend that down. You can think of these as like icicles, trying to get the illusion of these drips that have happened from this center section. Could be reflected trees, I don't know. You can see that I'm really messing up the smoothness of the rows, and that's okay. I'm gonna play some of this blue out here. I go a little bit overboard. I'm actually going to undo this next step so you can avoid doing this. I was just trying something. Play that blue out like that. I just went a little bit too much with it. A little bit would be fine, but I just go overboard. And that happens. In the moment, you just go for something and then you realize, no, I don't actually like that but we'll come back and fix it later. Part of the fun of painting is you have to experiment and try new things. Here I'm playing in some splatters of pure white using my knife here, and I'm allowing that knife to scrape through. Here I'm scraping off some of this excess blue. Just got a little too intense. 
Back to my clean knife and some more of the white. We're gonna cover up some of the blue here. Some of that white is overlapping, breaking up that solid line. Here I'm just scraping into the paint that's already on the canvas, varying it a bit, adding some texture. A little more white, blending, basically undoing some of the smoothness that I already got with the brushwork. And you can see the texture starts to come out, and the umber starts to play, and I'm just scraping again on this bottom section as well. Just want to mix it up, break it up. Got a little bit of the blue there, we can fix that. Get some of the clean titanium white. And we'll place some of this white right here above this horizontal line. And down here into this oxide color. A little more white. Picked up some of that oxide color, moved it up, and then you can see I'm not being very careful at all. I don't want to worry too much about the different strokes that I'm getting. I'm allowing the knife to kind of do what it wants, not holding it very heavily. Really going to push some more white over here, kind of break up and invade this bottom section. Trying to get it to be a little more organic between the blocks of color. Playing that white down into the rose oxide again. Blending through here. And put a little white over here. Get that white to sing against that blue. Okay, here's some raw sienna. I'm gonna cover up this blue I have right here. I'm actually gonna cover it up and then I'm gonna scrape off all the paint as much as possible and then we'll put some more of the white over the top. The brown just helps counteract some of that blue. It looks kind of ugly, to be honest. I didn't like the way it looked. It was too blocky and bulky. It didn't flow with the rest of the composition. So we're gonna scrape all that off and undo it. Let's just keep working on the stuff that is working. I really like these drips with the blue and the umber. Very messy, I know it looks very, very messy, but that's kind of the point. Okay, some white over here. Again, just trying to break up where one box ends and the other begins and play with the edges. Scraping some designs and some marks into the paint. Back to my titanium white. Make this smoother. A little bit of the red has gotten into the white, that's okay. Here I'm scraping off some of that blue. I'm gonna brush this upwards with a clean three inch brush. Just soften that. There, that's better. Soften a few spots through here. Just reestablish some of the smoothness. Got a little heavy handed with all the marks.
a few more of the marks back in. Here I'm going to do some very long scratched curved lines. This is a similar technique that I used in my flowers abstract, one of my most popular uh, abstract painting videos, and I'm going to do a very similar technique here, long curving scratched lines. I'm digging all the way back to the canvas through the paint, pressing very firmly, scratching upwards to the top of the canvas. It's kind of hard to see, but at close up you can really see the scratches. And here I'm going to scratch in some very long vertical lines. Pressing very hard, let's scrape off all of this sienna in blue. I'm just scraping it off onto my palette there. Get off that excess paint. That way we can cover it up. And just fixing the top of this stripe. Okay, grabbing some more of the permanent red, raw sienna, titanium white, and my two inch flat wash brush. Lay in some new color. That blue is so strong, it's hard to cover up. Pushing more into purple now. That looks okay, but let's get some more of that liquid white in there. It'll help blend things together and lighten everything up. That liquid white is thinner than the paint, so it lays on top of it nicely. Helps kind of cover up what's underneath. One of the key principles of wet and wet oil painting is that a thin paint will stick to a thicker paint. If you ever need to cover something up or layer over color, the best way to do that is either apply a lot of paint, like I did with a knife, thin out your paint with some medium like spirits, or you can use linseed oil, which is what I use often, or liquid white, and that will allow the paint to stick to the thicker paint underneath. It's the basic technique that Bob Ross uses in all of his paintings. By no means is this a Bob Ross painting at all. It's an abstract. As far as I know, he mostly did landscapes. Although I'd love to see an abstract by Bob Ross, that'd be cool. But the technique holds just as well for abstracts. Let's scratch some long horizontal lines here, and we're about done and ready to call this painting complete. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my Etsy shop at etsy.com slash shop slash impulsive artistry. You can buy my paintings there, and please consider subscribing. <laughs>